You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for July 29th, 2022. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we're changing the designation of our sponsors from fake to alternative, because that's probably a better term. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Just make sure you don't put the word fake in an email, okay? Repeatedly. Yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> that When you're talking about fake stuff that you're about to do to break the law, please, it, it, it's been mentioned a million times. It's the Stringer Bell rule from it is. Yeah. The, the Wire. Don't You don't write shit down when you're in a criminal conspiracy. You don't take notes. And that's <laughs> what they did. They took notes saying, here's what we should do with our fake electors that we're going to use to break the law. Now, the only thing this lacks is big twirly mustaches. Uh -huh. <laughs> and once we've overthrown the government, here's what we'll do with the survivors. But that's it. Everything else is all in place. We all know who these people are. We all know who their supporters are. And we all know what a cancer they are on the society. So we can move but on. But their with... lawyers aren't very bright. No. Well, they can't afford the good lawyers. I mean, uh, now they that... never paid the good lawyers. So, well, yeah. Now that Alan Dershowitz is in prison in uh, Martha's Vineyard for <laughs> some reason. They won't let me out because of prison. Democrats won't won't invite me to their porch parties. Yeah. Look, okay. Baker Square is not a prison, Alan. It's just <laughs> the only place it's left that will serve you. There. Yeah. No one else will serve you, Alan. So it seems yeah. like prison. But sorry, that's not what that is. And Rudy Giuliani is their is their number two guy. And he's, you know, God knows what's going on in his, you know, rat infested skull, but this is the best they've got. And this is straight Third Reich's shit. You know, it all is. the all the Nazis, all the leaders of the Nazi party were misfits and perverts and and uh, uh, drug addicts and, and lunatics before they came bright. to power. And then <laughs> yeah. they dressed up in uniform and said, oh, no, we're in charge now. Oh, OK. Then you're the master race now. Yeah. So they're we're not the master race. Exactly. No. Exactly. Drift glass. I yeah. have never, I can't remember the last time we've had a podcast where so many people anticipated Dude. The podcast we're going to have. Dude, talk about Matthew Dowd. No, we're not going to talk about Matthew Dowd today. We're not going to do that. No. I, it's just because of the third party stuff that's going on. But we're going to start with viewer mail. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's start right there. Uh, this is from listener Paul, uh, reader Paul, I think, but I think he's also a listener. Good morning, DG. For your viewing pleasure this morning, Yahoo has a story from Reuters, which my wife read to me last night. <laughs> announcing the formation of a new political party in your country. Forward! It is composed of people and cash from three groups, two Republican and one quote-unquote Democrat, and includes ex-Bushies, former Trumpers, and independent faux Democrats like Andrew Yang. They are a centrist third-way grouping with no policies but who play the greatest hits, blaming both sides for the gridlock in Washington, ending the corrupt duopoly. Another BS that you and BG, Blue Gal, have been documenting over the years. And surprise, one of Forward's members is none other than David Jolly. And I'm sure that people like Nicole Wallace and others that have given Jolly a platform on MSNBC will be delighted at this turn of events. I'm sure they are. Yup. With the American democracy under siege, let's blame both sides for the authoritarian turn of one of the existing parties. And let us also siphon off enough votes in a close race that gives the authoritarian a better chance of grabbing hold of Congress or the presidency. I think Mussolini's fascist newspaper in the 1920s Italy was also called Avante or Forward. Best to you and BG. And then listener Steve writes, I eagerly await the pod this week because the takedown of Andrew Yang's third party concept is going to be epic. Um, also in late breaking news, the New York Times has hired Frank Luntz. I'm not kidding. This is not New York Times pitch bot. This is actually true. The New York Times hired Frank Luntz to moderate a focus group of seven Trump voters and six Biden voters because unity. And one black <sighs> person. And one, one black, person. black person. Yes. Um, and I would mention yeah. in passing also that our friend Ten Grain uh, was worried this week that he was actually Billy Pilgrim, the character from Slaughterhouse Five, who was unstuck in time, mm -hmm. floating around in time with events occurring non sequentially. And the reason I 
identify with that or with, let's say, a temporal causality loop on the Enterprise where the ship just keeps blowing up over and over again <laughs> um, is because I have already written about this a hundred times in the last 17 years. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's exactly the same thing with exactly the same people with exactly the same, you know, empty calorie, vacant, bullshit, buzzword grift. And it's the both sides do it. And mm -hmm. the only contribution I've made to the discourse so far is by changing the name of the party that they are proposing from the forward party to the forward party. And the four ah. words are the four words are both sides do it. Literally, they're only po they have no policy on anything at all. They have no policy on abortion. Oh, they believe they believe in economic prosperity for the American people. They Drew Glass. They, they believe in freedom <laughs> and freedom and, and they uh, like pudding. The they, they like pudding. vanilla pudding very, very much. They love that pudding. Who doesn't love a parfait, Blue Gal? You know, who, <laughs> who doesn't love a parfait? Uh, and and they speak for the vast imaginary middle that wants, you know, a, a party that represents them, not the extremes on both sides. And this is just maddening to me mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. uh, and again, I have nothing new to contribute to the discourse. I've already no, written no. about this hundreds of times over the last oh, this 20 is, years. This is the no labels column written all over yeah. again it, it's exactly the same thing yeah it is this is i years and years ago back when david brooks first discovered independence um i wrote a long column um about independent the term independent being the greatest grand falloon of all and that's my mm -hmm. second kurt vonnegut reference it's grand falloon is a term from um cat's cradle and it, it's it's a term that means uh, a proud and meaningless association of people Mm -hmm. So independence doesn't mean anything at all. Yeah. It, it, if you are a Klansman and you want to smoke pot and the Republican Party isn't crazy enough for you, you are an independent. If you, <laughs> are right. a if you are a lesbian nun who needs an abortion, but the Democratic Party in your state has failed you and you need to go out of state to do that, you are probably an independent. There's no commonality among any of these independents other than they're pissed that they don't have a boutique little party that represents 100% of their personal interests 100% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. of the time. And every 18 months, some grifting asshole comes along with the backing of the entire mainstream media yeah. and MSNBC and every fucker on the bulwark says, you yeah. know, we, we have a solution to all of your questions and problems. It's a third way party. We're going forward with a third way party. And as I addressed directly to Mr. Andrew Yang this morning, we already tried this, mm -hmm. this centrist compromising thing. It was called, I'm going to whisper it now just so Andrew can hear it and you can't. It was called the Obama administration. <laughs> and in the Obama administration, my party spent eight fucking years offering olive branches and compromise and moving to the center, moving further past the center and offering Mitt Romney's health care plan and Republicans told him to go fuck off every minute of those eight years. They sabotaged everything. They, 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 they were slandering him all the time. Their moron racist voters lined up behind it and cheered to get nothing done. The mainstream media said, why can't both sides get along? Why, yeah, but why your class, I'm going to interrupt you for just a minute. There's one uh -huh. thing about this that makes me com gives me comfort. And uh -huh. that is the fact that there are, as Susie Madrek called them, employment grifters in the Republican Party trying desperately to find a soft landing spot. Yes, yes, that's for true. For Trump voters, right? Yes. This is a desperate move to say, oh, you know, the extremes on both sides, Democrats are just as bad. So here's this safe space where you can, we, we will do the Trump erasure. Mm hmm. And you never have to take any responsibility for your vote because Republicans never have to take any responsibility for the mess that their president makes. Of course not. And we can, you know, we can just say, oh, this this January 6th stuff is overblown. You know, oh, right. you know, yeah. we're just going to we're going to totally bush off. I mean, this is this is what you've written about, as you said, dozens and dozens and dozens of times through the Bush administration to the Obama administration. They've always tried this purple project or mm -hmm. you know no labels or whatever it is mm -hmm. it, don't forget co it, country over party blue gal country, country over, over party, party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you said you weren't going to talk about matthew dowd i know you? well i think that's that he matthew dowd and adam kinzinger both have a quote-unquote movement 
which amounts to a fucking hashtag and a tip jar. Yeah, right. Uh, of, right of, you right. know, the third way. But it's all the same yeah. grift. It's all it the same is. grift. It's yeah. all the same employment grift to right. get yourself on CNN and MSNBC and have a 501c3 that credulous Democrats, frankly, Ooh. and desperate Republicans can Ooh. contribute to. If we just give more money to Rick Wilson, maybe. Maybe Lindsey Graham will be defeated this time because Democrats don't know how to fight. And I I heard that a thousand times. And then, of course, you know, the Lincoln lads went, what, 0-72 in their campaign. 0-72. And they decided what we need is more money. That's the problem. We need even more money. Like, no. And and, and it it got uh, all of them sub-zero freezers and summer homes. So it's this is what Tim Miller's book revealed to me. Is how yes. much money is in this grift. Oh, There's a, God, yes. so much money. Mm-hmm. But the uh, thing is, Drift Glass, it comforts me to know that there is a return to form within Washington, that Trump didn't destroy it all. Well, And so the fact <laughs> that we, we predicted this, yeah. we, we predicted this in 2017. Well, You and I sat me- there and went, Burn the lifeboats five years ago because oh, we you're, knew yours they were going to build lifeboats to float away from this. Yours was the coffee filter party. Coffee filter party. We're going to put coffee filters on our heads and say, I never liked the tweeting. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, returning to both, returning to form in the form of both sidesism, which is arguably now completely indestructible. We will right. never be right. rid of it. It yeah. is, it is. It is not a it is not a feature or a bug of the mainstream media. It is the mainstream media. It is yeah. the bones. It is the it is the foundation of the media, and they will never ever stop doing it. So mm-hmm. we just need to get past that. But saying that's a return to form is like saying the meteor is right on time. Well, look, here comes the meteor to kill us all, just as we predicted. Yeah. I'm not thrilled by it because, as you know, Blue Gal, both sides do it is one half of the one two punch that put Trump in office. Exactly. And that's exactly. the problem. It's always these fucking enablers, usually from the New York Times op-ed page, mm-hmm. who, who mm-hmm. are busy running around at the at the edge of respectability talking about how, you know, yeah, we need gun control, but the anti-NRI people are just as bad. Right. And by the way, well, that was that was a <laughs> David Brooks column from 10 years ago this week. You know, the, an- the a- anti-NRA people are just as bad. as Because they're snobs. Because their snobbish <laughs> attitude and snobbiness is are snobs, and people don't like that. You know, people don't like snobbishness, blue gal. <laughs> Says David Brooks. And yes, the most self righteous prick. I died. <laughs> and, but that was that was a decade ago, and nothing yeah. has changed. Now, what has changed, I think, is the essential um, uh, components that make up an average Democrat now. Because we are yeah. much less willing to put up with this shit than we were. Right. Uh, you know, and I don't take credit for that, and I think you should take credit for yeah. that. We have been pounding away the both sides don't burn the lifeboats mm-hmm. things forever. And it is now an automatic, almost reflexive action when people announce this shit. Like, fuck you. Fuck yep. you. Don't you – do you have any memory? And that's that's the point. This is yes. the point. This is why it is unfair for a people like us, us ungrateful libtards, to remember the past. Because you start bringing up the past, you, as, I, as I started to say – You've got to bring up the Obama administration. When we tried all this shit, mm-hmm. we tried everything mm-hmm. that Andrew Yang wants us to try. And the Republican Party sabotaged him. The mainstream media blamed him for their sabotage. Mm-hmm. And then the GOP nominated the king of the birthers. And Andrew Yang only learned one thing. is that there's enough idiots out there, enough morons in New York with big money who will back any asshole who comes along and tells them it's both sides. Because they don't right. want to believe they're going to have to go out and fight Nazis like Grandpa did. They want right. to sit in their fucking condos and stay air conditioned and stay off the streets and pay someone else to clean up the mess. And if when the Yang reality can do- is the Republican Party is an extremist party. Yes. It has been an extremist party for decades. Yep. And it is only getting worse. And what Andrew Yang and Forward are laying the groundwork for is a President Tom Cotton. Yes. Or President Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis. Yeah. Just That's, lower the wire enough. Just lower the yeah. wire. Just, just, you know, just Jill Stein the wire enough. Just yeah. lower the threshold enough that yeah. Ron DeSantis can get in and then everybody can go back to, you know, the, and I think, I think, honestly, I think that's what the media wants. Yep. I think, I think it's yep. much more fun to watch democracy burn from the safety of your condo well, and your office. Your, your hit count is higher. Your advertising sure. revenue goes up. 
And what else do you care about if right. you're living in Manhattan trying to keep CBS Viacom going? Well, and if you want clicks, you just hire Frank Luntz to do a focus group on unity mm -hmm. and get, bring in a bunch of Trump voters and bring in a bunch of Biden voters and red and black ants and have them fight. And every you know? time a, a Democrat makes a very salient point on that panel about racism, Frank Luntz says, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's not talk about the horrible racist shit pile party I right. built. Right. You know, no, right. no. Frank Luntz should be spending his retiring years staked out over an anthill. As, <laughs> as it is, he is spending his retiring years ex taking money from the New York Times, from the liberal New York Times, to refurnish his creepy home that has a uh, replica of the Oval Office in it, because that's Frank Luntz. Drift Glass, um, I have some surprising news for you. Break it to me, baby. I can take it. Um, gay Republicans in Texas are shocked to find out that they have to continue to fight for acceptance in Texas. Oh, no. Really? In Texas? Of all the most <laughs> enlightened? You know, there's really basically only three places in, in the four in the, in the country where you and can. And we're waving to Tammy, our angel nerd, right we now. Are. Hi, we Tammy are. in Texas. We love um, you. Okay. San Francisco, Boys mm -hmm. Town in Chicago, half of New York, and Texas are the three gay capitals of the no. world. Everyone knows that. <laughs> Everyone knows that. So why well, are they having such trouble the there? The Republican Capitol, because uh, gay Republicans, it was reported in the Texas Tribune this week, who have fought for acceptance within the Texas Republican Party over the past three decades are finding it's not working out so good. Yeah. They told the yeah. Texas Tribune progress has been excruciatingly slow. Many of them have left the party. I wonder what they've done now. You know what? I'll bet you they're independents. I'll bet you they're joining the forward movement. But the number of log cabin Republicans in Texas continues to grow, apparently. Look, you know, I'm a big fan of yours. So mm -hmm. just for me, would you say that I'm an independent line? Cause so I'm an independent. People, yeah, this is, this is, you know, this is what they're doing. You just know it. And I, you know, there's a lot of stuff as writers that we can imagine ourselves into. I mean, I can do it. Mm -hmm letter perfect imitation of libertarian i can do a really oh, yeah. good imitation of a trump voter but i cannot wrap my head around being a member of a party that wants you extinct right that keeps fighting for acceptance in a party that tells you to your face Fuck you're going you. to hell yeah you're going to hell die you you putrid pervert son of a bitch mm -hmm. well why won't they accept me well yeah. maybe because their party is built around hating you bigotry yes and, and 30 years of this i don't other than you like getting punched in the face verbally over and over again that you get off on that i seriously don't understand you know there was a west wing character <laughs> who was a gay man and it was half the episode. They were trying to figure out, why are you voting with these people? It's like, well, I have other values that Republican Party, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, you love tax cuts. You love guns and tax cuts. Again, I get going back to Tim Miller's book, when you can compartmentalize yeah. so that the paycheck that's so big and you love that money and you're willing to be a, a partially hated token yeah. within the party for money, then I do understand that. I do. Um, well, you're, wi you're willing to stand in front of the party. and. Mm -hmm. You know, with your pride flag so yeah. that the, the bigots and homophobes behind you can pretend they're not bigots and homophobes. Right, exactly. They can, they can yeah. perform for the mainstream media and pretend that they're not what they are. Well, and you're going to pay it, but you're going to get paid. Right. But well, now we know it. what yeah. they are. This, yeah. See, now the problem is the masks are all gone. Mm -hmm. You know, we know, everybody knows what these people are now. And if you're still with them, there's something horribly wrong with you. And mm -hmm. you need to seek, and I'm not, I'm not kidding, you need to seek counseling if you are still a gay Republican in Texas, because there's something mm -hmm. really desperately wrong with you. I want to talk about cooking shows, Drift Glass. Please do, Blue Girl. <laughs> which we're enjoying. About the cook no, I want to talk about the analogy you used this week about Chopped. Oh, oh yes. And yes. how I just, on Chopped, everybody, if you haven't watched Chopped. What's wrong with you? Um, chef, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Chefs are given a basket of ingredients. And some of the ingredients are kind of weird, like candy canes are sometimes in the basket. Yeah. yeah. Um, weird things. So they'll, they'll throw you a loop. And uh, you have to make an entree or a dessert or an appetizer with using every one of the ingredients in the basket. You can add other things, but you have to have all of the basket ingredients in your dish. If you don't, if you're missing one, you lose. Right. And Drift Glass used this basket analogy this week in a post about the four M's. And so four I want M's. you to explain that 
to our podcast audience, Drift Glass? Well, I'd be happy to, Blue Gal. Um, Chopped is a show put on by the Food Network. and Oh, you don't want me to explain Chopped? No, Nobody I just explained. did. Oh, oh, I, <laughs> I see. want you to explain the okay. four M's, which are in the basket. Yeah. But whose basket is it? Well, the problem that anyone trying to put together a new Republican Party or a retrieved Republican Party or a competing Republican Party, you know, the Liz Cheney, um, never Trumper dream ticket, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever they're trying to build out of right. out of out of nothing, they have to have the four M's. They have to, and the four M's are money media, the party machinery, and the mob. You cannot make a party without those four things. And those four mm. things, there's no new ones of those coming along. There's no new yeah. 40 yeah. million people showing up at the door going, you know what? I I, I, I want to be a member of a Republican party, but not that Republican party. You have to take 95% of the shit that's in the basket you already have mm-hmm. and try to make mm-hmm. a new party out of it. And that's going to be a problem. Yeah. So, what do you do when you're trying to create a brand new, you know, fresh, dynamic <laughs> Republican Party out of the same shitty racist assholes that you've had around in your party since Goldwater? And, and well, the greedy donors, yeah. the greedy billionaire donors who want their egos stroked. Well, and the party and we, machinery that is owned by Donald Trump at the moment and right. win red, right? Absolutely. Um the money's not so much of a problem because as the fascist capitalists have proven, they will throw money at anybody mm-hmm. who continues to advance their agenda. They right. don't give a shit. They'll throw it. The mega donors will throw money at everybody. They'll they'll bet the board. They'll bet red well, and, and black and I everything. Keep, I keep pointing that out to people. When someone makes $12 million a year, that means next year there's another $12 million. Right. And you forget that. No, $12 million a year means next year there's another $12 million for them to throw at some yeah. Republican candidate who's going to do what they want. Yeah. And, and what seems like big money to, you know, poor, broke-ass podcasters like you and me is is pocket change of these people. Right. So they can afford to spend money, as they have been doing for decades, on mm-hmm. think tanks and magazines and TV networks and churches. And the whole infrastructure of the party is funded by these rich assholes. Mm-hmm. And they have they have proven over and over again they don't care who's running the party they don't care who the candidates are they want people who will serve their interests mm-hmm. and if it's whether it's Jeb or whether it's yeah. Trump or whether it's George W Bush they don't care as long as they're serving their interests they will pay for it so money's not a problem and media is not really a problem either because they can the media has shown over and over again especially the establishment media they're willing to forgive and forget everything. Mm -hmm. The the mainstream media was willing to bulldoze the entire Bush administration right down the memory hole at the drop of a hat um, when it became inconvenient to point out the fact the Republican Party was a was a catastrophe. And they went they wanted to move on to hating Barack Obama and sabotaging him. So media mainstream media is not really a problem. The, the, The Trump universe is limited by the fact that Trump exists. This is a problem. But sooner or later. They're going to get tired of this cranky, weird old man dominating everything, and they will start to go off someplace else. It'll happen slowly or it'll happen quickly. I you know, I acknowledge the fact that it might happen over five years. It might happen in one year. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But the ingredients remain the same. They need media. They need yeah. the, the love. And you know what? Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger have been out there having statues built to their greatness by the never Trumpers and by the mainstream media for almost oh, a year now. Their, their, their CNN audition is complete. It's all yeah, set. Absolutely. It's all set. Absolutely. So a presence- class, I just want to interrupt you with, with one comment about the media though. Sure. Um, in Brian Stelter's newsletter that came out this week, he was talking about where Donald Trump has been appearing. And I found this fascinating. A review of Trump's recent interviews. He's not talking to Fox. He's not talking to the Daily Caller. And he's certainly not talking to the Bulwark. <laughs> no, no. But here's where he, he was on in the past 12 weeks or, or six months. Trump chatted with John Solomon and Amanda Head on the Real America's Voice streaming network in March. Mm-hmm. The Full Send podcast, whatever that is. David Brody on the Christian Broadcasting Network 700 Club in May. He talked to Rob Finnerty on Newsmax's Wake Up America in June. Most of these programs are either unrated or low rated. But you know what happened to all of the clips from all of those venues? 
They went everywhere. Extraordinarily friendly venues where no one was going to ask him about January 6th or Uh his emails or his attorneys. All those clips went on to CNN and MSNBC and Fox. Yep. Yep. He's still there. So he's still there. This the and and Brian Stelter was talking about this splintering of conservative media to more and more Trump friendly splinters because people want that juice. Right. That's right. And it doesn't matter anymore how small the audience is. No. no the, the, uh, because the, yeah. it's Trump and it'll get picked up. Well, and and the idea behind getting media backing, because you mm-hmm. can't function. The Democrats prove this exactly the opposite way. You can't wage a war if the media won't cover it. It doesn't yeah. matter how good democratic messaging is or how, how, how uh, precise it is or how diligent it is or how thorough it is or how consistent it is. If no one will point a camera at it, mm-hmm. it doesn't exist. So it doesn't matter how good you are at messaging. If, if, no, in the, the, if a message falls in the forest and there's no camera, it never happened. Right. But at the same, by the same token, Republicans can now just go on extraordinarily friendly media yep. that doesn't question anything about them or hold them accountable in any way. And mainstream media, which has already surrendered their job of holding Republicans accountable, yes, will pick up that sweetened pudding. I'm going to use that pudding word again, <laughs> you know, that is not holding Trump accountable at all and use it as a way to present Trump to the w- wider audience. Well, and and remember, you and I are now thinking like- This is let's fascism. Pre- let's pretend that you and I are, are, are the rebuilders of a Republican party. Okay. <laughs> all I want, all I care about, I know it's, it's, a, but we're imaginative writers. No, we write yeah, fiction. Right. We do stuff. No, I get it. Um, well, we know how they're going to do it anyway. We know how, we know, we've seen the, we wrote the blueprints. We, we know. We know exactly. And, and so we're halfway yeah. through that now. Right. And, and the idea is you don't have to win over the entire media, but you have, all you have to do is constrict the badness mm-hmm. of Donald Trump to January 6th. Right. Right. If you can get a bulk of the people in the media. To say, you know, January 6th, he did a bad thing. But overall, mm-hmm. he, he was awesome. And we should keep right. doing all the awesome shit he was doing. That's what Rusty Bowers said. That's what all yeah, these yeah. assholes who testified were like, yeah, it was pretty awful. But would you vote for him again? Oh, yeah. What he did was great. I thought it was <laughs> but what great. About all the, what about all the good things? We really wanted to focus on all the good things Trump did. Yeah. yeah. No, that so, was in the testimony. Absolutely. So if you, can, if you can constrict down criticism of Donald Trump's administration to to January 5th, 6th, and 7th, mm-hmm. and just pretend everything else is great, which is exactly yeah. what Liz Cheney did. Yes, she, she was did. with him right up until the bitter end. These people who were with them right up until the bitter end are all being touted as, as truth-speaking, honest heroes. No. Liz Cheney was at the Rose Garden beer party mm-hmm. when Trump and the House of Representatives tried to take away our health insurance. Oh, Liz Cheney has said repeatedly that we are mass-murdering, baby-killing monsters mm-hmm. who kill yeah. babies outside the womb. And that our party stands for that, and that we're pure evil. Yeah. So, and she's the she's the leader of the revolution now. So, right. the right. media. Let's, let's for the moment, the media is not a problem. You, you can get the mainstream press online just by being, you know, you know, uh, we, there are regrets, mistakes were made, and Fox <laughs> News media going, you know, the Trump administration was fucking awesome for that one thing, and we just want to keep doing that fucking awesome thing. So now you have the media on your side. The mob is the next yeah. part of this equation. They're called the base because they are the foundation on which everything else is built. Conservative media, Republicans' political careers, every mega donor, every autocratic dream is built on the base of the party. And the defining features of the base of the party are that they will continue to have a seething hatred of the left. They Mm -hmm. hate us. Their entire movement is built around hating people like us. And the left will continue to mean whatever the Republican minister of propaganda says it means. Mm-hmm. So up until two minutes ago, Tim Miller was a Republican. Now he's a squish lefty. Anyone who says a bad thing about Republicans is a squish lefty. So the average GOP voter would rather choose death by a million spider bites over ever admitting they were wrong about anything, ever. They they can't do it. The entire Tea Party was, a, was them pretending they were never there. And finally, the Republican Party base will continue to be a shit pile of bigots and imbeciles who will go ballistic at any suggestion that they are a shit pile of bigots and imbeciles. So they're a powder keg, right? Mm -hmm. How do you get this powder keg of rage and racism, grievance and denial 
into your party. When they, when uh, avoiding the ugly truth about them is the most important thing you can do because you will alienate them and you'll be a coastal elite snob if you suggest that maybe they're responsible for some of the mess they leave behind. Well, Liz Cheney has already done that. Mm -hmm. In her closing remarks at the last day of the hearing, this is Liz Cheney. Donald Trump knows that millions of Americans who supported him would stand up and defend our nation were it threatened. They would put their lives and their freedoms at stake to protect her, and he is preying on their patriotism. He's preying on their sense of justice. And on January 6th, Donald Trump turned their love of country into a weapon against our capital and our constitution. Got that? Mm -hmm. They're not bad people. They're not wrong. They're not fascists. They're good, noble, patriotic Americans who've just been, had their head up their ass for the last 40 years. And Donald Trump fooled them. He tricked them. He used his trickery to trick them into believing stuff that wasn't true. And as I wrote in November of 2009 about the Bush administration, <laughs> like German it's soldiers. archives, by the way. Oh, it is. Like German soldiers after the fall of Berlin, they've stopped running away from the catastrophe they created only long enough to burn their uniforms. Liz Cheney has already explained to anybody who is bothering to listen what the plan is. We're going to pretend that the only bad people involved in the Trump administration were Trump and 10 of his friends. Everyone else was innocent or, or bamboozled or somehow uh, uh, mesmerized into doing bad things. They thought, because at heart, these people are patriots. They love their country. They're noble, good people who were cruelly misled by a con man. So now you've got the mob in your pocket. So what do you do about the party apparatus? The last thing, the party machinery. Well, that's the easiest part of all. Because basically, the never Trumpers have already said that they are in the forgiveness business. They and only they are allowed to decide who gets forgiven, who gets back in the tent, and who doesn't. And they have basically said, eh, pretty much anybody who was anti-Trump after January 6th will give a look to, will forgive, will absolve. Well, that's 95% of the party, right? Right, so right. everybody went right along with them until the mob showed up and suddenly everybody got real surprised that there was a mob and this was bad. And so the party machinery is there to be picked up for pennies. You can port over everybody who was a witness to the January 6th committee to a new Republican party. All the party leaders, the Rusty Bowers out there in the field are ready to be adopted. So if you are building a GOP out of the shittiest basket imaginable, the fascist racist basket, you have – we have been able to – in our little experiment here, show how you can capture the mob, you can get all the money you want, you can adopt the party machinery with nary a back thought, and the media will always go along. And mm -hmm. that's the road forward. That's what they're going to do. I don't know if it'll be next year or five years from now, but Adam Kinzinger, God bless his little heart, went on the air and said, you know what? Ten years from now, nobody's going to admit they supported Trump. And then two days later, he went on the air again, different channels, said, you know what? Five years from now, nobody's going to admit they supported Trump. And Drift Glass is telling you, two years from now, nobody's going to admit they supported Trump. They're all going to go through the Bush off machine, and they're all going to become good, pure Republicans who hate people like us. And all the never Trumpers who are our friends will stab us in the back and become the leaders of the new party. Mm. That's my prediction. And and I the only reason I'm saying this is we've been through this before. This is the same shit they pulled out of the Bush administration, the same discovery of independence, the same absolution of the mob, the same pretense that somehow, 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 the same, hey, look over there, it's Barack Obama. Let's not talk about what just happened. It's all happening all over again. I'm just wondering, uh, though, if the, because at the end of the Bush administration, uh -huh. the David Jollies of the world were still considered insiders to the sure. Republican Party. Mm-hmm. And I, I think there has been a break for that. Can I reply to that? Yes, please. Donald Trump was never a real Republican blue gown. Yeah, well, but I see, I, I don't think that, I think there's a party out there. Trump brought a lot of racists and imbeciles who were not party people mm -hmm. the into dance. the party. Yeah, he did. And maybe they'll go home and not vote next time like they did before. Maybe they will just be non-voters. You know, they, they voted for Trump, not for the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll go home and return to country music and some, you know, church or trucks or their farms or the clan or whatever, whatever they go back to. Why would they go back? And, I mean, if you can get someone who will come along and tell them that they are noble patriots who care about America more than those filthy communist babies. Yeah, but they're not going to listen to David Jolly. They they need no. a Glenn Beck. 
well, that's that's, they, that's they, who brought them on board the Tea Party was right. Glenn Beck. But the the party apparatus that they're going to get is going to have all of that. It's going mm-hmm. to have a Ron DeSantis, or it's going to have a Tucker yeah. Carlson, who will who will shed his skin and change his positions in a, in a in a, in a trice. Mm-hmm. And remember, these the entire party base are completely reprogrammable. If if yep. you tell them Donald Trump was a great man who was flawed and who fooled you and who led you down a garden path. But you know what? He was right about everything else. Mm-hmm. These chumps, and 90% of these assholes will go along with that because they don't want to look bad or stupid or wrong in front of the Okay, but this is cotton. what makes me really sad. Yep. Because the heir apparent to the Biden administration is Kamala Harris. Yes, it is. Yes, she is. And we've seen how she was treated this week. We did. And we know that there is no better gasoline to rev up a revived Republican Party than a black president. Yeah. Uh, well, well, except for a female black president. A, a woman. Yeah, <laughs> yes. That's right. I mean, that's right. it's it's the total package. Yeah. And that just makes me sad. Oh, it makes me terribly sad. It. I don't want to know any of this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be right yeah. about any of this. Yeah. Believe me. I would be thrilled to death if if I were completely wrong. They all went off and you know joined mega churches and prayed to whatever fucked up fascist god they prayed to and got the hell out of politics. Mm-hmm. But that, but I don't think that's going to happen. There's no yeah. evidence at all that these people are going to go back to their lives beforehand. If I may quote the Joker, you change things. You know, <laughs> this yeah. is a different yeah. world now. And now these jokers have tasted real power, and not real power through a proxy like George W. Bush, who wouldn't come out and tell them that they should go drag liberals from their homes and beat them with sticks, which is what right. they really want a president to tell them. They had to make no, do. He, he signed the, the Voting Rights Act, the yeah. renewal of the Voting Rights Act in a bipartisan way. They had to make do with these milk toast, squish, mm-hmm. not really with us assholes, because that's mm-hmm. what the leadership of the party um, was able to get away with. They mm-hmm. provided the gasoline for the engine. The engine was um, them. And then the donors drove them wherever they wanted. They finally got a little taste of what it's like to actually have power, to actually have a guy who will lock people up who they don't like, who mm-hmm. will sanction beating people in the streets they don't like. And that's and his promise it. in his so-called policy speech this week. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put homeless in camps. Yeah. I'm going to diminish and fire all of the quote-unquote deep state. Right. The administrative state of the, of the government is going to be removed by po- my power. Well, what's the only way you're allowed to be wrong on the right? You didn't go far enough. Right. You weren't conservative enough. Yeah. And I swear to you, they're primed and ready for the next step in this direction. Yeah. And any reconstituted or competing party will have to build itself out of those pieces. Mm-hmm. And there's only a mm-hmm. certain number of shapes it can take. But the core of the party, the, the base of the party will remain constant. They must be assuaged. They must be told they're patriots. They must be flattered. They must be told all of their problems are because of dirty, commie, baby-killing liberals. Mm-hmm. That's that's a given. You can't stray from that. If you stray from that, then you are cast out forever. But if you can build a party where Donald Trump, as I said, was right about everything except this one thing, and we yeah. want to keep doing all the awesome shit he did, but we want to do it better and smarter, um, and we want you to come with us and finally crush the liberal devil, then You've got 80%, 90% of the party right there. And the rest will go along because yeah. all the rest want to they do want is be- They want power and a paycheck. Yeah. They want power yeah. and a paycheck. They want to be in the mix. They want to be somewhere where power is being passed around. And that's Chris, the I want to talk for a minute. I know everyone has talked about Matt Gates's obscene comments and yeah. all of the money that has been raised for abortion rights uh-huh. uh, for women seeking abortion um, on behalf of Matt Gates's ugly- misogynistic comments. Uh, but I want to talk about Mothers Against Greg Abbott in Texas. And of course, it, Mothers Against Greg Abbott is MAGA. Yeah. You know, that's very, very well done. Mm-hmm. Um, but they put out an amazing ad this week. I talked about it on Twitter. I showed it on Twitter of a couple in a doctor's office finding out what my mother found out, which yep. is that there is a pregnancy um, where there is a severe brain deformity and the child is not going to live and the child's going to suffer before they die. Right. That's and right. what a devastating diagnosis to have. And in this ad, the doctor gets on the red phone to Greg Abbott and Greg Abbott said, Oh no, she's got to carry that 
pregnancy to term. Yep. Only Greg can decide. Only Greg can decide. It was just a perfect encapsulation of what the cruelty that is uh, the pro-life, quote unquote, pro-life, anti-choice uh-huh. movement. And let's let's be clear. That is Liz Cheney's position. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That is absolutely Liz. Liz yep. Cheney backs every horrifying, fucking awful thing the Republican Party has done up until an actual violent coup. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that she and her bloodlust uh-huh. are on that committee. Me too. To take Very useful. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I wanted also to bring up something that came in the mail today. It's um, The Current, oh. which is a newsletter from the United Methodists and what's happening in the government of the church. And it has a lot. 90% of it these days is about the divorce that the United Methodist Church is going through over gay marriage mm-hmm. and how the the church that is represented by this newsletter is going to accept gay marriage and gay priests and the schism, the people that don't want equality are going to leave the church. But there was a, an article by Jim Harnish, uh, and it it's a profile of um, Harry A. Blackman, who uh, died in 1999. He was a Methodist. He was mm-hmm. a Supreme Court justice, but he was also a Methodist. He was the he was the author of the Roe decision, right? Yes, he was. Yeah. And that was the point that was brought up, was that the official position of the Methodist Church, and it, he, it was an, ostensibly an article about Harry Blackman, but then the point okay. of the article was, let's talk about Roe v. Wade, and let's talk about the f- official position of the church when it comes to abortion. And so I'm not going to read the whole thing, uh, but this sentence jumped out at me. We entrust God to provide guidance, wisdom, and discernment to those facing an unintended pregnancy, period. Where's the, where's, where's the part about, and that's why we have to vote Greg Abbott? Uh... <laughs> nope. We, are, we trust women and we trust God. Wow. Period. That's a and very... So, um... Roe v. Wade is the compromise. Right. Always has been. Roe v. Wade is the compromise. And all this crap about Democrats wanting to abort babies at birth and so forth. Forget that Roe v. Wade is a first trimester. Right. What happened in 1973 was first trimester was allowed. And there have been variations and dealing with the life of the mother and dealing with severe abnormality and medical decisions that have to be made and so forth. But this six-week bullshit is not... The compromise. The, there was a compromise made. It was the Hyde Amendment and Roe v. Wade. That was the mm-hmm. compromise. Mm-hmm. Um, I also want to talk about, this is connected to this. Um, Please. This week, there was a study released that 14 states that have the most restrictive abortion laws, including South Dakota, invest the least in policies and programs for women and children. This is a study from the Commonwealth Fund. And uh, I came across an article about Mississippi that stops Medicaid for new mothers after 60 days. Um, This is like the minimum wage. States that have a 725 minimum wage have that as their floor for wages because the federal government demands that the minimum wage be at the very bottom. At least. That's right. And so the federal government has forced them to have a 725 minimum wage. Um, the federal government forces states to cover Medicaid for 60 days. Mm-hmm. So that is the, the floor, not the ceiling. That is the floor for states. And that's why Mississippi stopped, they stopped Medicaid after 60 days for new mothers. Um, but um, our friend, your friend and mine, Lauren Underwood, Democrat from Illinois, yeah, did the Momnibus bill. Yes, she did. Which was incorporated into the American Rescue Plan, which gave states a carve out. And this is interesting because, you know, Obama did Medicaid expansion where working people who have a job who are not provided with health insurance can qualify for Medicaid if the state's okay. It is Medicaid expansion allows people who are not children, not extreme poverty or disabled, Mm -hmm. but have a job and are working can get Medicaid. And that's what Medicaid expansion is. It expands it to working people. Um, And there were a lot of states that didn't want to do that. 
a lot of Republican states that didn't want to expand Medicaid. It well, didn't it had, expand Medicaid. It has it had Barack Obama's Kenyans. You know, it has the Barack Obamacare stink on it, and so we're right. not going to do it. Right. Out of spite, as Barack Obama pointed out. So what Lauren Underwood said was, let's do a carve out where there's an expansion of Medicaid to new moms. And, you know, states that did not expand Medicaid to to poor people to everyone. Yeah. Might might take it as, oh, well, we should do it because of babies and moms and being pro baby. We should do that. We should do it for moms. And some Mm -hmm. states did. So in the American Rescue Plan and the Momnibus Bill, Lauren Underwood, bless her heart, uh, had a one year expansion. So one year and 60 days is the expansion that Medicaid will provide. States have five years to sign up for this. And states like Illinois, who had already expanded Medicaid, signed up immediately to allow all new moms who qualify for Medicaid to get an extra year. So it's a year and 60 days in Illinois, 14 months of Medicaid, no questions asked for new moms if you need health insurance. Um, But Mississippi, Republican legislature in Mississippi and Republican, excuse me, Republican legislators in Mississippi specifically said, no, we will not expand Medicaid to new moms for a year because that is Medicaid expansion. Mm-hmm. It's it's cruelty. Well, yeah. And it's racist, bigoted cruelty. And this is where the whole um, stupid argument about leave it to the states. Yeah. Just leave it to the states. Um, becomes ridiculous mm-hmm. because these failed states, mm-hmm. these these collapsing shithole states become a burden on everybody else. Well, and the reason I found out about this Mississippi situation is there's now a huge scandal going on in Mississippi where there was a huge $5 million plus misappropriation of welfare funds to build a soccer stadium. Oh, that's right. That's right. So welfare money. Oh, but that's the extra welfare money. That's No, no. That's the so extra welfare money. We're that's gonna, right. We're going to build a soccer stadium with that for our friends. Mm-hmm. And people are going to jail. I mean, this is, you know, statewide news that pe- politicians going to jail and, and government officials going to jail for it. Uh, but it was TANF money. It was temporary assistance to needy families money mm-hmm. that was stolen by good Christian white Republicans. And... This is why you have Voting Rights Act. This is why you have federal marshals marching through schools, making sure that teachers aren't telling Jewish students to write an essay on why Jesus loves me, because these guys can't govern themselves. No, they're, they really are uh, basket cases. Yeah. yeah. They are, they are a, a series of third world banana republics within mm-hmm. our borders mm-hmm. who will not govern themselves, who hate us. And thanks to the Constitution, the way the Constitution is written, have enormous power mm-hmm. over federal law. Yeah. That these shithole states and their awful representatives were able to pack the courts, yeah. uh, are able to kill almost anything that goes through the Congress, um, and their policies are going to kill more of their own citizens, impoverish more of their own citizens, make more of their own citizens unhealthy in a thousand different ways. And all of that misery and all that suffering and all that rage will be pointed at liberals. Yeah. Well, because I just somehow... want to say, if if you're a blue dot in one of those states and you're listening to us to keep you sane, we're with you and we're we, thinking about you and you're, at, you're we we love you. Yay, Illinois. But we live in the middle of Trump country. We do. You know, Illinois yeah. is not a big blue, gorgeous ocean from from coast to shining coast from river to river it's only a liberal island because of chicago and its environs yeah Yeah, chicago the suburbs and a few places downstate Mm -hmm. this is a as as a friend of mine told me when i first came down here 30 years ago southern illinois is a southern state Mm -hmm. springfield is a southern town a genteel polite southern town but it has a set of tracks on one side of the tracks are the black people on the other side of the tracks are the white people it has white flight suburbs it has little carve outs all over the city where there are different communities that just invented themselves out of whole cloth so they wouldn't have to be part of the black community Mm -hmm. it is it has housing discrimination it has all the ills of every place else the thing it has going for it is it's inside of this massive blue envelope that comes out of chicago 
so they can't get away with too much crazy shit. And it works for us, sort of. But the people who <laughs> run well, things and, down... And being being the seat of state government yeah. provides opportunities for poor and black people to move up. Yes, yes, it does. The economic ladder because of the state government being here. Yes. Yeah. And Barack being Obama, equal opportunity employers. Yes. Barack Obama did not rise to power in Springfield. He rose to power in Chicago. Uh-huh. Um, he, he worked in Springfield. He announced in Springfield because this is where the state government is. But yeah. make no mistake, if, if Illinois were to, in fact, get rid of Chicago, which is what Darren Bailey wants to do. He does. You know, the guy running for governor wants to jettison Chicago because Chicago is the source of all of his problems and miseries and nightmares mm-hmm. and gives him mm-hmm. makes him pee the bed every night. Darren Bailey pees the bed every night. It's the <laughs> thought of this black city in his white state. You have to you have to explain to people Darren Bailey is running as a Republican for governor of Illinois and he is going to lose. He's the Republican nominee for governor. He is a right wing lunatic. Uh, he he checks every box in the crazy chart, and including he's going- not being very bright. No, he's he's kind of stupid, um, and but if you jettison Chicago, we are basically Missouri or Mississippi. Oh, I, I, mean, I think we're, I think we're more Iowa. I think we're yeah. we're actually a highly rural state. Missouri yes. has St. Louis. That's true. Um, but but it, we we do understand this. This is what is a little bit um, frustrating and maddening, and sometimes enlightening and sometimes joyful that we actually understand conservative voter base voters much better than the coastal elites who pretend to understand them and frankly the former republicans who are all shocked that the republican party is full of bigots and imbeciles we live among them we, we know go to what the grocery they store think store see yeah. the they're, trump they're not, stickers yes this is the part none of this is a mystery to anyone who actually lives out in the world it's yeah. only people who conduct focus groups for the, for new, the new york, york times, times. <laughs> who are shocked to discover that the Republican Party is full of Republicans. We're not. And the reason people like us are not invited to play at the big table is because we would talk about shit like this. Yeah. We would say, well, we, how and the- remember the past. Yeah. How the <laughs> fuck did you miss this? These people were your audience for 30 years. They paid your bills. Pandering to these assholes put a roof over your head and a boat in the dock with your name on it. How do you pretend now you didn't know what they were when you were pandering to them specifically for decades? That's the question we would ask and that's the last time we would ever be on Meet the Press. And that's uh, the last time you're ever allowed to tweet to them also. Exactly. Good anyway. Class, it's time to do a news roundup. After you, blue gal. The Justice Department is investigating Trump's actions in a January 6th criminal probe. People familiar with the probe said investigators are examining the former president's conversations and have seized phone records of top aides. And I do love <laughs> the, the image that someone put up on Twitter of... Mark Meadows' phone records are what Republicans want Hunter Biden's laptop to be. Yeah, yeah. This this is very bad for them. Yeah. Um, you've already mentioned this, but in, in greater depth, one month after the Supreme Cult gutted Roe versus Wade, this is from The Guardian, uh, bans at six weeks gestation or earlier before most women know they're pregnant are in force in 12 states as of Thursday. The bans have forced patients to seek abortions and who have the, the time and money to travel hundreds of miles from home. At times, the travel has also placed friends, families, and abortion rights organizations in legal jeopardy, as states have criminalized helping people help, uh, help people obtain abortions. Other patients have seen routine care for miscarriages and ectopic pregnancies delayed, as doctors fear criminal sanctions should they accidentally violate these bans. On the subject of Dems, should propose a bunch of popular stuff and get Republicans on the record voting against it. This from Washington Post. If GOP senators don't fear this vote, what could possibly scare them? Fear is a part of every elected official's life. To keep their jobs, they must worry about whether something they do or say will anger their constituents. Many a bill has died because officeholders thought, if I vote for this, my opponent in the next election will wrap it around my neck. But how do we square that universal fact of representative democracy with the struggle Democrats have had passing legislation that would reduce the cost of prescription drugs? Or more precisely, why is it that Democrats are laboring to pass such a bill while Republicans don't fear opposing it? They are afraid, this is my answer, they are afraid to be witnessed voting for anything while a Democratic president is in office because of fear of being primaried. That's it. 
It yeah. is interesting to watch Hannity try to wrap his words around and look, Democrats want to reduce the price of prescription drugs. How dare they? How dare, how they? dare they? And yeah. this is, you know, if you if you were through the Affordable Care Act wars, you know how this works. Yes, right. It doesn't matter what the truth is to these people at all. And continuing to believe that if we just pass just the right bill with just the right words, then we'll nail these bastards. No, you won't because they don't give a shit. They don't think like normal humans do. They think like fascists do. All they respond to is fear and propaganda. So I, I, I want Democrats to propose good things. I want them to put them up to vote. Maybe once in a while they'll pass some. But don't expect this will change anyone's hearts or minds. Um, Steve Bannon was found guilty of criminal contempt of Congress for refusing to comply with a subpoena for documents and testimony issued by the January 6th committee. He will be sentenced on October 21st. GOP lawmaker attended gay son's wedding three days after voting against same-sex marriage. The gay son of Representative Glenn Thompson, Republican of Pennsylvania, got married on Friday. A few days earlier, his father voted against the Respect for Marriage Act. I don't think anything... I don't want to be there at Thanksgiving. Yeah. No, but I mean, that's the chef's kiss of the Republican Party. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, for One America News Network, the Dominion litigation has not gone well so far. Judges have rejected its attempts to have the cases dismissed. In one ruling, the judge concluded that the OAN had acted, quote, maliciously and consciously in perpetuating falsehoods about Dominion. That's something you don't want to hear from a judge. Now that Verizon has dumped them, OAN is making on-air pleas to liberals to help save the network by sending them money. It is absolutely crucial that for once we defy the powers that be and we all come together. Set aside our differences in a united effort, said current OAN host and future OnlyFans hostess, Allison Steinberg. <laughs> well, future forward party spokesmistress, I think, as well. <laughs> Jesus. It, you know. She's an awful person. Yeah, they're all She's awful. She's the one that celebrated Biden getting COVID. She's mm -hmm. the one who juts out her tits and her lips and says poisonous things about Democrats every day. And then when she's about to lose her fucking job. Let's all come together and save my- Let's all come together for free speech. Come together and save my shitty job. Yeah, right. Because, um, right. you know, she'll do it for love. She'll do it for money. Um, <laughs> Joe Manchin has tested positive for COVID-19. This oh, actually really sorry is sorry to hear that. This is actually more complicated. I think Dick Durbin was tested today and came down with it too, which makes voting for the cool stuff that's actually going to pass or might pass a little more complicated because- now they have to isolate and when they by get back, Zoom. Yeah. 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 I hope so. COVID-19 outbreaks have hit Los Angeles International Airport with at least 400 confirmed cases among TSA staff and workers at the American and Southwest Airlines, according to county health officials. Get vaxxed and boosted, please. Over the past 10 years, gun makers have made $1 billion from the sale of AR-15 style weapons. $1 billion. The World Health Organization declared monkeypox a global health emergency. The last time the who, that the WHO made a similar declaration was during the early stages of the COVID-19 outbreak in January of 2020. Previously undisclosed emails show how the Trump campaign worked with outside lawyers and advisors to organize the fake elector plan to reverse Trump's election defeat. Dozens of emails show the lawyers involved repeatedly used the word fake to refer to the alternative slates of electors that the group even appointed a point person in seven states to help organize the fake electors. Kind of wild creative. We would just be sending in fake electoral votes for Pence so that someone in Congress could make an objection when they started counting the votes and start arguing that the fake votes should be counted. This is from Jack Willenchak, a lawyer who helped organize the pro-Trump electors in Arizona. He wrote this on December 8th, 2020, in an email to Boris Epstein. Remember Boris Epstein? This is my favorite guy. An advisor for the Trump campaign. In a follow-up email, Wilton Check added that, quote, alternative votes is probably a better term than fake votes. Yeah. Georgia yeah. Governor Brian Kemp will testify before the grand jury investigating Trump's efforts to overturn his election loss in the state of, of Georgia. Fannie Willis, the district attorney in Fulton County, has also issued subpoenas in recent days seeking testimony from some of Trump's closest confidants and allies, including Rudy Giuliani and U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham. 
and sent letters to 16 Georgia Republican leaders warning them that they are targets in a criminal probe, which means that they are not allowed to shred documents relating to the investigation. You know, reading this all back to back to back is like a steamroller. I swear. It's just, I can't believe we live in this timeline. The January 6th committee said it is prepared to consider subpoenaing Virginia Ginny Thomas, wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, if she does not appear voluntarily. And she absolutely is not going to appear voluntarily. The Senate advanced a bill that would provide $52 billion in subsidies to domestic semiconductor manufacturers to boost U.S. competitiveness with China. The bill was opposed by 31 Republicans and Bernie Sanders. ABC News reports that the Republican National Committee has paid nearly $2 million to law firms representing Donald Trump. But now they're warning the former president that they'll stop paying his legal bills if he runs for president in 2024. They will cut off his allowance if he runs for president in 2024. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Senator Joe Manchin on Wednesday announced a deal on the energy and health care bill representing a breakthrough after more than a year of negotiations that have been scuttled time after time by Joe Manchin. Oh, no. Fingers crossed, folks. Yeah. This this could be big. This could be big. Uh, In local news, conservative downstate GOP lawmakers seek party censure for the aforementioned Representative Adam Kinzinger for his role on the January 6th committee investigating Trump. A group of downstate Republican lawmakers aligned with Republican candidate for governor Darren Bailey on Monday asked the Illinois Republican Party to censure Adam Kinzinger for his actions on the Select House Committee investigating the role of Donald Trump, who backs Bailey in the January 6th insurrection. In a statement, the five-member ultra-conservative Illinois Freedom Caucus contends that Adam Kinzinger, a six-term Republican from Chinoa, has, quote, offered up little but incendiary language wild exaggerations, and personal opinions as so-called evidence of his baseless claims. Bruce Rauner talked about unloading the Thompson Center in Chicago, big building, for his entire term, but Governor Pritzker actually got it done. The center will be renovated by the new owner and then will be sold to Google, which plans to use it to expand Chicago operations. As part of the agreement, Illinois, the state of Illinois, will receive $30 million in cash, as well as the property at 115 South LaSalle, valued at $75 million. At the press conference, Governor Pritzker announced that this consolidation will save Illinois taxpayers nearly a billion dollars over the next 30 years. Google touted the Thompson Center's direct access to six uh, public transit lines, as providing its employees with unparalleled public transit access. The Thompson Center connects the blue, brown, green, orange, purple, and pink lines. And the proposed renovations at the building will not require any shutdown to CTA operations. Woohoo! That building was a hot mess from the day it went up. It, yeah. the, whole, the whole air conditioning theory behind it was a failure. It was loud. I've been at it dozens of times, and I'm very glad, other than... Um, Running Scared, the Billy Crystal and Gregory Hines movie, uh, that building has been a useless trash pile uh, in downtown Chicago for decades and decades. And I'm really glad that Google and our governor has found a way to make money on the deal and bring Google downtown to Chicago. That is a big deal. A Springfield police report says an employee of Staub Funeral Home admitted to damaging an inflatable rat that had been set up outside the business because she said the display was embarrassing and wrong. Why did they have an inflatable rat outside a funeral home? Well, inflatable rats are usually a sign of union action. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know much about the funeral director's situation, but that was probably it. There are about a thousand jokes in there somewhere, and I will dig them all down. There are. But not today. Um, Okay. You want to talk a little bit about Adam Kinzinger and Kamala Harris? Well, Kamala Harris spoke to some visually impaired people this week, and she began her comments by describing herself so that those who were visually impaired would have an image of who was talking to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, Adam Kinzinger took great offense to how Kamala Harris presented herself, Uh, you know, that she looked dumb using her pronouns and describing her suit and how dumb this was, and it was dumb, 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 and it was exactly what's wrong with Democratic politicians. 
and Adam Kinzinger is supposed to be the hero of the revolution, you know, one of them. Um, but he just went after Kamala Harris with all of the barrels that he had. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then it turned out, you know, many people pointed out, well, she was doing this, uh, uh, to assist those with whom she was meeting, uh, that this was the standard by which you open a meeting with people who are visually impaired. And, uh, he did not, uh, back down. He doubled down. You wouldn't right? let it go. You wouldn't let it go. She was trying to be accommodating and, um, respectful. Mm -hmm. And, uh, she was. And Adam Kinzinger got on his high horse and talked about, uh, this is what's wrong with Democrats. Yeah. This is this is what cost them election and was corrected pretty brutally all over Twitter. And then he decided to blame it on the middle, the center. His, his direct quote, one of his direct quotes was, I made the point that this kind of stuff does not sit well with the middle. Yet the anger is focused on those of us telling the facts. First of all, Adam Kinzinger doesn't know shit about the middle at all. None of them do, because there is no middle. This is what is wrong with our entire political and media system. Everybody claims to speak for a center that they doesn't exist, and if it did exist, they don't understand. But Adam Kinzinger could say, no, 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 this is why Democrats fail, because they don't understand the middle, they don't understand the center, they don't understand normal people. It's the extremes on both sides and, and this kind of pronoun nonsense and talking about yourself in the third person is exactly what's wrong with the Democratic Party. And I got to wonder, since this is the sort of thing that Fox News prowls around for and grabs onto mm -hmm. and beats into the ground, how many people in the middle are getting their news from Newsmax mm -hmm. and Fox News? Because Adam Kinzinger sure as hell is. And all these clowns are, but what they are seeing is not what liberals actually are. What they are seeing are the caricatures of those people. And they are carrying those Republican right-wing asshole caricatures into the political arena and saying, this is what all Americans think about Democrats. This is why all Democrats need to stop doing this, because this is the fault of the Democrats. But this is the fault of you, Adam, being part of a shitty racist party and not shutting the fuck up and enjoying your moment in the, in basking in the sunlight as Liz Cheney's youthful ward. This is you deciding, I'm going to do one last asshole Republican thing to burnish my right-wing credentials for when I get on CNN or MSNBC or wherever I land, or with Forward as one of their founding members. Yeah, yeah. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Tiger Lily who has never had an unexpressed thought or feeling <laughs> and who never lets an insult pass without comment or vengeance. In this picture, Tiger Lily has a soft blanket and is not impressed with you. But of course, Tiger Lily eats freshly poured cat food. What did we say? Our alternative sponsor, not fake sponsor. They're not fake, they're alternative. alternative. Sponsor. Yeah, That's yeah. a better phrase. That's a much uh -huh. better phrase. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cats will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Tiger Lily at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. This is a great week to send us your internet kitty. Yeah. We are running low, so please send them in. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag fire to joy. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and we love doing this podcast. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal and postal address information is all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media and if you were looking forward to the takedown of Forward <laughs> <laughs> and if we met your, your expectations, send us five bucks. That's a great way to let us know you liked a specific episode. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? 
Well, Blue Gal, the internet kiddies are not one bit surprised that the Trump lawyers will be taken down by emails. Hey, let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license, copyright 2022, BGBG Productions Incorporated.